My fountain pens are some of the favorite stationary items that I own in my entire collection. I love using them to write in my journals and for pen paling. They're so much fun to use, especially when you can find some inks that you really love and you can try them out in different pens and just see how everything works together so beautifully. Today, I wanna to talk about my fountain pen collection, the pros, the cons, and whether I would recommend any of these to you. So let's get started. We're going to start with the Twisby VAC 700R Iris. This is a medium nib pen and I've had it for just over a year now and I, I really love it. It's, it's great. I received it as a gift uh, for Christmas, but I know that it was bought online on Cult Pen's website, which is based in the UK. And it currently has Green with Curiosity by Ferris Wheel Press in it. And you can see because it's a demonstrator, you can see the ink in it as I twist it around. It's almost empty, but you can still see it in there. As for the inkwell, it is huge. That's a really great thing about this pen. You can use up the ink really quickly or you can fill it all the way up and it'll last you a long time. And I find when I write, it's super smooth. It's on the wetter side of medium, meaning I find that it's more between a medium and a broad nib, which I really love. It shows off the properties of the inks that I like to use really well, like sheening and shading and especially the shimmer, you want to make sure that you're using at least a medium nib with shimmer inks specifically so that they don't get they don't get clogged. And I have never been disappointed with this pen when it comes to shimmer inks. For the cons, I mean, it could be a con if you don't like big pens, but it is on the large side and it is on the heavier side as well. So you can see it kind of fits into my hand, but it's still quite large. And you can post the cap if you'd like to, but I find that it's just too heavy to write with like this. So I end up keeping the cap off. But if that's something that you like to do and post the cap on the end, then that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing that you can't really do with this pen is swap out the nib. So like I said, this is a medium. And if you wanted to have it in a broad or an extra fine, some pens let you swap out the nib for a different size, but this one doesn't. So you buy the size that you want and you keep it and you can't swap it out later. Uh, no complaints for me because I love the medium. So that is just something to keep in mind. It's also on the more expensive side. It retails for about 115 Canadian dollars. So if that is something that is out of your price range, of course, that isn't something that would be feasible for you, which is totally understandable because that is quite expensive for a writing instrument. But if you're looking for something that is a little bit better quality, a little bit more of an investment, especially if you have a few pens already and you're looking to sort of upgrade a little bit, definitely recommend this pen. The second one I want to talk about is the Twisby Diamond 580 in the white rose gold, another Twisby, of course. It's one of my newer ones. I received it a couple of months ago and it also came from Cult Pens, so definitely shout out to Cult Pens. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a really great pen and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It's currently inked with Tumbling Time Blue from Ferrisville Press and you can see a little bit of the shimmer in there, but it is quite full, so it's hard to see. As you can tell, it's a demonstrator pen, so you can see the ink in it already, and it's a beautiful writer, very, very smooth, very enjoyable, and even the nib is in rose gold, which is a really pretty touch. It matches the rest of the metal elements on the pen. Again, it is on the more expensive side, this one, and the Twisby back are both around 115 Canadian dollars at the time of this video anyway. 
but it's absolutely worth it. I um, upgraded to this um, after using Ecos for a long time, which is the next pen I'll be talking about, and I really see the difference in quality. So if you're looking again to upgrade, this could be another really great option for you. In terms of the downsides, I will say that because it's white, I'm a little bit nervous about it getting stained with ink over time. I'm sure Twisby wouldn't let that happen and would properly treat their pens, but I'm definitely going to keep an extra eye out, especially on the grip when it comes to making sure that it doesn't stain with the inks that I'm using in the pen. It's easy to get ink on your hands and then back onto the pen. It just is what it is with fountain pens. So I'll just be keeping an extra eye out to make sure that I'm not accidentally staining it. If that's something that makes you really nervous or you don't want to chance it, then this might not be the pen for you. And I would also say that you can cap uh, the pen or sorry, you can post the pen um, if you want to but um, it's not super secure if you, unless you really push down on it. And I find it's kind of top heavy that way. So I don't use it with the cap posted on the edge. So if you do like to post your caps, that's just something to be aware of. Overall, I really love the piston fill where you twist it to draw the ink up. It's really easy to use. It's a large inkwell. Not as large as the VAC 700R, but still a really good size. It'll last me for a long time, even with a medium nib, and I've never had an issue when it comes to glitter, sh shimmer, sheening inks, or anything like that. It's very dependable, and it's just a beautiful writer. So I would definitely recommend this one. Now we'll move on to the next pen, which is my Twisby Eco. I've had this for probably 10 years now, which is kind of crazy to think about. It was my first ever fountain pen that I bought for myself and it holds a special place in my heart even though I don't really use it that much anymore. And that's because it is an extra fine nib. This means that I can't put any glitter inks in here. Even some of the, the sheening ones might be a little bit dicey because enough ink might not come out of the pen to even see some of those properties so this is a great pen for if you just really like solid inks with maybe a little bit of shading but if you're looking to really show off that sheening and the glitter this is definitely not the size of nib for you in terms of the pen specifically uh, I have this inked up with Peter Moss from Ferris Wheel Press right now, which is just a straight up beautiful hunter green and it's gorgeous. I really like it, but you will find with extra fine nibs as well that the ink will come out lighter and in some cases, especially if it is a more pastel or light colored ink to begin with, it can be very hard to read with, with extra fine nibs. Anyway, back, up, back to the pen. The pros are it's easy to fill. Uh, again, it's the piston fill, so you would put the tip of the pen into the ink and twist the top, I won't do it now, but twist the top to draw the ink up into the inkwell here. It's a really good size for an inkwell and um, it has never really failed me in terms of having enough ink for me at any given time. It's pretty smooth as well for an extra fine nib. You'll find some extra fine nibs are quite scratchy, but I got lucky and this one was really great. With the Eco specifically, um, you can pull out the feed and the nib from the rest of the pen for easy cleaning, which is a real plus. And if you have another Eco, you can swap the nibs as well. So I could find a medium size pen and swap the nib into this one and make this a medium. I haven't done that yet, but it's definitely an option. It makes cleaning much easier too. You just have to be careful when you're putting it back into the pen and, and taking it out. I will say <laughs> a big caveat of the Ecos I find is that they're very brittle. And I say this because I have dropped this pen at least once and the resin body, so this plastic clear part has 
cracked at the edge and I had to get it repaired in order for it to not leak. And that was dropping it from about two feet with the cap on. So it was a complete accident, but it made the pen pretty much unusable. I have another Twisby Eco actually that is a white rose gold one that I dropped with the cap on twice in about six months of buying it and I just gave up on repairing it every couple of months because it's just so brittle and I don't want to have to worry about it and I just found it very frustrating. So with the Ecos, you just have to be really careful. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them to be 100% honest because of that factor. Now you'll hear me in my videos talk about make sure you always put the cap on and put it back in your case even if you're only doing something else for a couple of seconds because I am just so overly cautious of my Twisbees now that I've had to get two pens repaired in their lifetime with me. So that's a big caveat. They're very, very popular. They are more entry-level priced, so they're about $50 Canadian, depending on the type you're getting and if you can get a sale. So they're a little bit more on the entry-level side when it comes to pricing, but I just don't know if I'll ever buy another one. And the reason why I asked for the Twisby Diamond 580 rose gold, white rose gold, for Christmas was to replace that Twisby Eco um, because I just <laughs> I couldn't stomach the possibility of dropping it and repairing it again. So big caveat with the Ecos, I don't use this one a lot because of that and also because of the extra fine nib. Um, this one has been repaired so I might replace it with that nib but We'll see. Um, it's just something to, to be aware of, that's all. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend it um, now, even though it was my ride or die for so long. Finally, I'm going to talk about all three of these pens at once because they are the same pen, <laughs> just in different colors, basically. These are all the Caveco Sport um, pens. They are considered pocket pens because they are quite small and they're made out of plastic, uh, so they're on the more entry-level side of things. Last I looked, I believe these are between 30 to 40 Canadian dollars each, but they can get a little bit more expensive and you can see why as I talk about them. These are very lightweight and they're easy to carry around. Of course, they are mostly plastic, so you wouldn't really expect them to be heavy. And because of their size, they're really easy to put into a pocket or with a smaller sized notebook or just kind of throw almost anywhere you need them and they'll most likely fit. They're made for the cap to be posted so when you take them out of the cap you'll notice they get even more tiny they're almost the size of one of my fingers and they're made for the cap to be posted on the end so that you get a more full-sized pen writing experience this is the caveco iridescent pearl and it's one of their limited edition colors it's semi-transparent so you can see through the plastic and see a little bit of the converter in there and some of the nib through the cap. There's lots of colors to choose from when it comes to the Cavecos. Uh, so that one is the iridescent pearl. Then we have the light lavender, which is another limited edition color. This one is solid, so you can't see through it. And they're all medium nibs. This is the Caveco Dark Olive, and this one is unique because it has the gold elements. So the nib is gold and the embossing on it is gold. They're easy to clean. They're easy to swap out the different nibs for different sizes if you want to. All of mine are medium, but I've been thinking about swapping it out for, swapping one out at least, for a broad nib just to try something different. But they seem pretty durable. I mean, they're, they're plastic. I would definitely think that 
this is more durable than the Eco. And I haven't been proven wrong yet. So that um, that's really great. And, you know, they're, they're really good for starter pens if the you know, 30 to 40 Canadian dollar range is within your budget. Um, and you're not going to be super worried about it like one of these, you know, Twisbees because it is plastic at the end of the day. So it doesn't seem so, so precious. The cons, um, <laughs> well, you know, one of the big cons is that the converter is so super baby tiny. Um, it holds the smallest amount of ink I think I've ever seen for a fountain pen and you also have to buy it separately. That is another con when it comes to these pens is they are very basic and you can choose to add things on that will make it a little bit more expensive. So the converters are about, I think they're about $5 Canadian. They're, they're quite cheap, but again, they're so, so tiny, like compared to, you know, the, the Twisby Vac, it's, it's crazy how little they are. So you are going to be filling them up a lot more often than you would the other Twisby pens. But if you like trying out different inks and if you don't mind that, then that's not really an issue. It can also be a little bit tricky to use and get used to because it's just so small. With my nails, sometimes it's hard to pull the plunger up to draw the ink into the ink well. So that's just like a really small caveat. But again, you have to buy this in addition to the pen. Um, it doesn't come with it. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, something else to keep in mind is these clips are also add-ons. You have to buy them separately. I bought the gold one, of course, to match the gold detailing on this one, but all three of these, I had to buy three converters and three clips um, for these pens. So if a clip is really important to you, it's going to be an extra cost. Also, if your ink leaks into the pen it's usually fine but if you get one like this or a clear one it will stain the inside of your pen and you'll be able to see it through the pen i'm not sure if you can see this but there is a ring of ink here that was dried and then stained because it leaked and it got into the double wall plastic and it was oh <laughs> It was a whole thing. Um, I don't really mind because you can barely see it, but again, it can, you know, ink can leak. That's just something about fountain pens you have to be okay with. It will be messy. It will get on your hands. It will stain from time to time, but that's just a part of having fountain pens. Um, you know, the pocket size is really cute and it's really nice, but if you prefer larger pens, of course, the size difference is quite stark. So you'll have to choose what you think you write best with and what's more, most comfortable for you. People with small hands really like these because they are so tiny. And I find as well that the medium nibs in here seem to be a lot drier than the medium nibs in my Twisbees. I find that it's harder to see the glitter and the sheen um, when I write with the same ink in a Quebeco versus a Twisby. I find the properties of the, the inks come out a lot better in the VAC and the 580 than they do in the Quebeco. So just kind of be aware of that as well. That's one of the things about fountain pens in general is the ink, the pen, the paper are all variables that could really drastically change the experience you have or what an ink looks like or how a pen behaves. So it's just all trial and error, but this is just something that I found about the Cavecos. So some final recommendations. I would say that the Quebecos are great as starter pens if that price point is something that is affordable for you. I would say these are, are really great because they have tons of colors. You can buy the ink cartridges if you want or you can go straight to a converter and try out all different kinds of fountain pen ink. So that's a great way to do it. And because the converters are so small, you can go through the ink quickly and then try another color if you want to or fill it back up. It gives you lots of options. So I definitely would say that these are a good starter pen. Um, the Twisby, you know, this one, uh, I, 
I don't know if I would recommend this, to be honest, unless you absolutely know for sure it is never going to leave your desk or you are okay with the idea that you might break it by dropping it, even with the cap on. I mean, that could happen with any of them. You shouldn't necessarily be throwing these around or anything. I think the Cavecos would, would withstand it a little bit better than, than the Eco, but if you're looking to about the same price, I would probably start with the Cavecos. If you're looking to upgrade, like I had said before, and maybe you have a couple of Ecos or a couple of other pens, and you're looking to maybe upgrade or, or try out something that's a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more uh, than what you have now, I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend these two Twisby pens. Um, they've been nothing but amazing. I always reach for them because they're they're just so great and I love keeping the shimmer inks in them specifically because they just show the best of the ink. And like I said before, if you want shimmery inks, if you're kind of a maximalist when it comes to inks like me, definitely get a pen in a medium nib or above a broad um, could be great as well to really give yourself the best chance of seeing all of those properties, all of the shimmer, all of the sheening, just everything on the page um, so that you get the full experience. In many fine or, or EF nibs, extra fine nibs, um, you won't get that same experience. So just be be careful, be aware, make sure that you're you're choosing the pen that works best for you. That concludes all of my thoughts on my fountain pen collection. This is my my ride or die collection here, plus the, the broken uh, <laughs> eco that you saw briefly. I really hope this was helpful for you and that you enjoyed talking with me about my pens. If you have any other comments or questions or thoughts, definitely leave a comment and I will get back to you on it. I will list uh, these pens in the description box as well and please make sure if you like this video to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more stationary content. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Bye.